Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 9 on Fargo CW. Almost 143 million Americans were put at risk when their personal information was stolen from Equifax in early September. A month and a half later, consumers are still figuring out how to protect themselves from identity theft. Valley News team's Molly Casey spoke with AARP about ways you can protect your personal information. Each year, we fill out hundreds of forms, gather piles of junk mail, and collect documents like bank statements. And while throwing them away seems right, it could put your personal information at risk. That's the kind of information somebody would need to steal your identity. Credit card applications, old licenses, and medical records. They're all items Lyle Halverson of AARP North Dakota says are targets for identity thieves. If I had your social security number, for example, and your home address, I could apply for a credit card in your name. Earlier this year, the AARP Shredfest in Fargo recycled 28,000 pounds of personal documents. But even those that tried to protect themselves could have been compromised. About 250,000 North Dakotans had their personal information stolen as part of the Equifax data breach. Halverson says that if you haven't checked if you were affected, you should. And even if you weren't a victim of the Equifax breach, to frequently check your financial accounts for suspicious activity and keep track of your credit score through Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. You're eligible for a free credit report once a year from each of those credit reporting agencies. He recommends spacing the reports out to every four months, but to always monitor and shred your personal information. It's a simple step again that people can take to help protect their identity. From Fargo, Molly Casey, Valley News Live. And if you missed today's free AARP Shredfest event, the next one will be in April of 2018. If you need help uncovering fraud and corruption in your community, you can call our whistleblower hotline. We'll do our best to get to the bottom of it. Call 701-237-6576 and leave your tip. And a member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. Authorities in Ottertail County are still looking for a man missing since Tuesday. Paul Tracy Baker was last seen driving to a bait shop in Dent, Minnesota, where he lives, according to the Ottertail County Sheriff's Office. He was wearing jeans, a blue t-shirt, and black steel toe boots, and was driving a tan 2001 Oldsmobile Silhouette van. If you have any information on where Baker is, you're asked to call the Sheriff's Office using the number at the bottom of your screen. Well, coming up after weather, some concerning numbers on high school dropout rates in North Dakota and the story of one woman and her reunion with a long lost friend. But first, Justin, what do we have to look forward to on the weather front? Yeah, thank you, Robert. Good evening, everybody. Yeah, here's a look at our Valley News Live Storm Team Skycam Network shot in Fargo. We were warm as we went through the morning. Temperatures near 60 degrees as we made our way into early afternoon. Mainly cloudy skies, a few sprinkles into the Fargo area. That's basically all we got for moisture. A few peaks of sun before the sun did set. And temperatures on their way down right now. 53 in Fargo, 50 Valley City, Jamestown, Detroit Lakes, and Fergus Falls. We're at 52 right now at Thiefer Falls. Crookston at 54. Devils Lake and Langdon both at 48 degrees. Winds are still a little breezy out there from the west or southwest, mainly between 15 and 25 miles per hour. Some gusts closer to 30 miles per hour. And here's what it looks like on the radar. First off, most of the rain has moved off to the east and out of our viewing area. We got mainly cloudy skies for most of us and a few passing showers, especially into uh, the northern valley from Grafton out toward Cavalier and the Langdon area. But that is it for most of the moisture in our viewing area. We have this low pressure system to our north and this cold front stretching all the way down into Oklahoma and northern Texas. Some severe weather as you make your way further south. A couple of systems moving through pretty rapidly. High pressure is going to work its way in tonight, followed by another low pressure system that will spark off some showers 
hours as we go through the day on Monday. Here's the hour by hour forecast. We will clear out pretty nicely as that high works its way in as we go through the overnight. Temperatures falling from near 50 to near 40 for overnight lows. And then for the day tomorrow, a windy southerly wind. Now we'll get temperatures up to again uh, unseasonably warm levels. We'll be into the lower 60s in most places. And we do have a, a, a chance of a passing shower, especially in our northern counties. Our southern counties stay mainly dry with just partly cloudy skies as we go through later on in the afternoon. So mostly sunny skies turning partly cloudy in the Fargo area. Highs in the lower 60s as we keep a breezy southerly wind. Elsewhere across the region, we're into the upper 50s, out toward Detroit Lakes, Bemidji, and Wadena. And we're closer to that 60 degree mark out into the Devil's Lake area. Again, the best chance is some moisture, mainly in our northern counties, with partly to mostly cloudy skies everywhere else. Then for the day on Monday, we will see temperatures again a little warm for this time of year. Highs into the Fargo area around that 58 degree mark. And as you can see with the green on the map, we have more chances for a passing shower as we go through the day on Monday. Here is your photo of the day, Lake of the Woods Sunrise in War Road, Minnesota. Thank you, Vicki, for this one. Leaves it in the background of the seven-day forecast. And there's your chance of some rain and windy conditions on Monday, high 56, 49 on Tuesday, partly cloudy and breezy. Back up to 61 on Wednesday, partly cloudy with periods of rain moving through for Thursday, a high of 45, possibly ending as some snow showers by Friday morning before clearing. It'll be windy to round out the week and temperatures only into the upper 30s for Friday and Saturday, but Saturday we're back to drier conditions. All right, thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Well, a man is dead after a rollover crash in Cavalier County, five miles west of Walhalla. Last night, just before midnight, the North Dakota Highway Patrol says 31-year-old Heinrich Fair from Walhalla failed to make a right-hand curb. The truck he was driving rolled over, and his 33-year-old passenger was thrown out and died at the scene. Fair was charged with DUI. The victim's name has not been released, pending notification of family. A new study shows Native American students in North Dakota are still lagging behind when it comes to graduating high school. A dropout prevention and re-engagement summit was held in the state earlier this month. It aimed to inform teachers about the problem and to give them tools to help to keep students in school. Now, despite the state having a 90% graduation rate, only about 65% of Native American students actually receive their high school diploma or GED. The Twin Cities will begin regulating Airbnb and other short-term vacation rentals. Minneapolis City Council approved a measure yesterday saying they wanted something in place before the 2018 Super Bowl. The ordinances will allow the city to inspect properties and prohibit rentals. People looking to rent a home, condominium, or apartment in the city would pay a $46 license fee each year. Now that fee would be waived if the owner continues to stay in the home while the guest is visiting. Well, a woman from Minnesota has been reunited with her dog 14 months after it wandered off from home. Gordon Severson has the story. Hi, everyone. That was me. <laughs> Cathedral Hill School in St. Paul had an unexpected visitor Tuesday. A new mascot of sorts. Oh my gosh, they loved it. <laughs> a three-year-old white shih tzu named Bo. I carried this dog for like a mile because I didn't want to set it down. Found by one of their teachers on her morning walk to work. And it didn't have a leash or a collar. Who was seconds away from wandering onto I-94. I like ran across traffic to get it. Hello. At the school, teachers found his ID chip. Oh my goodness. And tracked him to an owner in North Minneapolis who had lost him back in August. Sweet little bow, I know. That's August of last year. He's our dog of the year. <laughs> and after a little bit of digging, there's our bow! He's here! <laughs> a heartwarming reunion. Bow bow! 14 months in the making. Hey. Hey. A furry little face. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Shirley Pierce never thought she'd see again. It's been over a year. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> After he disappeared from his leash and fenced in backyard. I'm just thankful to God that, that I got that call. The call that brought Bo back into her arms. Where you 
you've been traveling, huh? We're united with quite a story to tell. <laughs> Isn't the truth? He's been traveling. If you are looking for a lost dog and want some advice, you can head to valleynewslive.com and click on the link attached to this story. Well, there's a new CW giveaway we want to remind you about. It's a VNL VIP Fargo Four Sweet Night experience on November 4th. All you have to do to register to win is head to valleynewslive.com and click on the contest tab. You'll get the chance to hang out with the Valley News Live crew while also enjoying some hockey. The deadline to register is on October 30th at noon. Well, still ahead tonight, more than 50 Egyptian police are dead after an attack. The details on that after the break.